Fun fact, you ready for this one? I like this one a lot. Manatees use farting to control their buoyancy. Yes, that's right. You heard it here first, probably, because I didn't know this until recently, but an adult manatee will eat between 100 and 150 pounds of vegetation a day. That doesn't even how. That seems like a ridiculous amount. Which means that they have a lot of methane that builds up inside them, which they use to control their buoyancy. If they want to float to the top, they hold the farts in. Sounds like really uncomfortable. And then if they want to sink back down, just let out a little fart, sink back down. Sounds like you. Go manatees. <laughs> hey man, that fuel keeps me healthy, okay? Great t-shirt, who sells those? I'd snatch one up right away. I want that shirt. Need the shirt, bro? Well, guess what? You're in luck. They're now available. Woo, -hoo! party to celebrate. Thank you guys for all the support. We've honestly had a lot of questions in the past about you know, how you guys possibly could support and you know, these t-shirts would be a little part in doing that. They're really nice t-shirts too. They are tri blends so they're nice and soft. And honestly, it would just be like so cool if we actually saw people ever wearing them when we were climbing. That would just make our day knowing that you guys are part of the train, climb, sand, repeat family. So yeah, click that link in the show notes. Is it smart to implement pull-ups in the rest periods between sets on your hangboard routine? Honestly, I would not. I mean, I, I see the point in that you wanna try and build your pull strength as well when you're doing this routine, but if you're working on like a max hang routine, you don't really wanna to pull too many resources away to these other large muscle groups. You wanna be able to focus on being like fully prepared for each set because the point of a max hang is to put maximum effort into it. And if all of a sudden like your forearms or like your shoulders are a little bit tired from doing the pull-ups, it's gonna affect your ultimate goal of getting stronger on your max hangs. I generally get this type of discomfort coming on quite gradually during bouldering sessions, and the pain can become quite intense, accompanied by a sensation of weakness in the whole arm. The discomfort generally goes away the next day. Is this consistent with a biceps tendinopathy? It also occurs from swimming and even once from throwing loads of snowballs one afternoon. So the answer to this and why I thought this was an interesting question is actually, as I was reading it, I was thinking, hmm, it's actually probably your infraspinatus and or your teres minor, those external rotators. Oftentimes the activities that cause pain gives us really big clues. You mentioned pain with swimming and even throwing. Throwing places loads of stress on the external rotators as you slow the arm down after the throwing motion. Swimming also places constant load on the external rotators as we bring the arm through our stroke like out of the water. Bouldering, lots of stress on those external rotators as it stabilizes the shoulders and maybe like more intense on like harder boulder roots. If the symptoms don't necessarily match the activity, dig deeper and see what makes sense. I would definitely check out some strength for your external rotators and see if that helps. If you're not climbing a bunch of like overhung stuff and placing a lot of load on your biceps, don't just generally think because hey, the symptoms are in this area, it has to be my biceps. Think about those other activities and see if that helps you come to a conclusion about your symptoms. Do you think one arm pull-ups really add to your climbing grades, like climbing higher grades, or is finger strength more of a factor? So overall, finger strength and technique it definitely is more important in my opinion. This is especially true if you're advancing through more difficult grades. Having a lot of upper body strength may allow you to quickly progress through like V0 to like V4 or 5 maybe, but then technique becomes more important factor. Um, have you ever like seen like any of your gymnast like friends that climb V3 their first day because they're basically campusing it? Yeah, they're super strong, but eventually finger strength on those tiny holds becomes a huge factor. Good shoulder strength and stability will definitely help though. I mean, don't discount that. I'm pretty sure Magos can do like 15 one arm pull-ups on a six millimeter edge. So maybe that should be your goal. That should not be your goal, Mago says God. Low volume, high intensity repetitions. They are asking if it should be three sets of five, then three, then one to two repetitions, and that they're guessing only the top rep matters as long as you're tracking strength gains. So this question is really in relation to strength training and the amount of repetitions to perform. They mentioned three sets, the first being five repetitions, the second being three, and the third being one to two reps. This format is awesome for strength training as this style of repetition is a focus on strength while avoiding hypertrophy. 
which is really great for climbing. My modification though is to do a total of four to five sets depending on how warmed up you are. I like to do my first set around eight to 10 repetitions as a warm up, then five to six reps as the second, three to four the third, and then between one to three reps in those final sets. This model will help you avoid injury while avoiding getting too swole while still getting nice and super strong. How much force am I supposed to put into the palm crimps? It feels like the only reason it hurts is because I push too hard. Putty crimps are mostly fine. So to directly answer your question, you should only be applying as much force as to create little to no discomfort, but enough to load the tissue so we start to promote our positive changes to our healing cycle. Once you can move on to something that is more measurable and objective and less subjective, like the putty or the farmer crimps, you should, as that will be easier to measure. Side note, this actually brings up like a really important thought of mine relating to any kind of injury or issue. Try and be objective, really. When we have an injury, the body has so many different processes going on, both like neurological and physiological, that sometimes it can be really hard to read your body and can be confusing to tell if you're doing better and making progress. You may be getting like frustrated when really you're doing fine. You may start to get impatient when really you're healing normally. Try to be objective with your rehab and make it measurable. That way you can feel confident that your rehab is actually working and that confidence will make your injury feel better, meaning you'll feel less frustrated, more focused, and that will have a positive snowball effect in your healing cycle. How applicable is this for other tendon injuries like a TFCC injury, for example? They're referring to the, like, the pain science and the proper pain protocol. No, honestly, that's a great question. And yes, definitely pain science can be applied in many different areas from a finger injury to a knee injury. Now, when it comes to a TFCC injury, sometimes pain science isn't as perfect because it can be more a physical factor than the neurological factor simply because with the TFCC injury, oftentimes it's our like activities of daily living or our work that continue to exacerbate that. So it, on that spectrum of physical to neurological component of our injury, it may kind of shift a little more towards that physical com com component. But remember, all of our injuries have both a physical and neurological component, so understanding pain science is going to be beneficial regardless of the injury. All right, well, that's it for today's viewer question video. Thanks again for those questions. Keep them coming. Keep posting them to the YouTube comment section of any of our videos, and we'll be sure to get them answered. And if they're particularly helpful, they'll be on one of these videos. And until next time, buy that t-shirt, train, climb in the t-shirt, send, celebrate your send with your t-shirt, repeat. You can even repeat the buying part, that's fine, you know? Multiple colors, for friends, for family, you know, why not? And that will have a positive snowball effect in your healing cycle. I know, I was like, I was like, I literally, you, you saw the pause. It was like a dramatic effect pause, but really I didn't know what word to use. Pause. <laughs> Cycle. <laughs> like and subscribe for more super sweet vids, y'all. So lame, dude. So lame. I thought it was pretty good.